You know, it, you could really, you make it in this, I mean, that might sound a little harsh, but ultimately you make it in the world alone. And people, man, as long as you're going to be completely depending on the government or other people, uh, yeah, you're basically a slave. So yep. uh, these people, it's it's like they don't even realize that, yeah, the sun's still shining, we still have soil, we still have water. We have all the basic things we need for life, yet they're panicking, thinking yeah. like the, the whole world's going to end if they don't get this stupid little application. And they weren't even guaranteed to get housing. All they wanted was to apply to be put into the system just for like a massive waiting list because so many people are so dependent. We have, what is it, like 40 million people on food stamps. So people would, these FEMA camps, I don't think they're going to have to force people. I mean, let's say, you know, this is all just theorizing for what they're for. If they are going to use them to put people in, I honestly don't think they would need to force the vast majority of people into them. Man, I never thought about that until you said that. I guess I should have because, like you said, I was pointing this out in corporatism and then in that Camp FEMA video, uh, Gary Franchi's film, I was saying it's for, you know, people will just, I was thinking more people will say, oh, I have nowhere to go. I guess I'll go to the camp. They wouldn't think of it as a camp, though. It's like a government neighborhood <laughs> or something they'd think uh -huh. of it as. I always find a nice term for it. You know, yep. whatever they want to call it. Maybe they'll call it FEMA camp, you know, who knows. But, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a good point. They, they may be, based on what we see in Detroit and Atlanta and places like that, people may beat each other into, you know, meat over, uh, you know, I want, you know, the FEMA camp slot. And, you know, it, I don't know. I guess we think it's either, they'll think it's either a FEMA camp or a box in the alley when, you know, I've got a whole stack of books behind me that I read gradually. I've been reading through the years about how to survive. And, you know, it's almost, almost like you know, I know I'd be happier once I get out of the you know suburban prison and so forth. And you know, it's it's a I can't just go do it right now. That'd be a big deal because you know I've got the family and so forth. That would be I, I'm not used to it. You know, I've me and my family have always lived a certain way. But if we were forced, you know, I bet we'd be a lot happier. I'm just not sure. But you know, I mean, it doesn't. It seems like it's a very easy way to live. You know, we're taught it's oh, it's so hard. And, you know, civilization is so easy, you know, where we've got no free time. And our only, the only little bit of free time we actually do have, we spend watching TV. So that's a great point. And you were talking about how, you know, we depend on others. Um, and you're, if you do, you're a slave. Yeah, I was pointing that out a long time ago also, how if you have a situation where one, I think this is in corporatism, my first book, anybody can buy it at antimatterradio.com. Uh, and for prices cheaper than Amazon. But yeah, I was pointing out how if you are in a situation where there's one person who has power over another, no matter what you want to think, <laughs> there's, it's inevitable, and it's just a matter of time that corruption enters, and one per the person on the weaker end gets taken advantage of. That is the epitome of civilization, and it's the anti-thesis of uh, pre-civilization, you know, what we're, we're talking about is, you know, shamans and Amazon Indians and American Indians and so forth tonight. They didn't, basically, they had similar status. There was, there weren't small variations. You've got the medicine man on the top and then the, um, you know, the great warrior over here and so forth. And there were hierarchies and, and whatnot, but it was nothing like, you know, now we're, oh, I'm a better person because I have three bathrooms and six rooms in my house that I never use. Whereas you don't, you ha you know, you live over in that neighborhood. It's just we, the culture is set up now where wealth is determined, you know, worth, and so therefore everybody's constantly at each other's throats, either mentally, or verbally, or literally, you know, in all this competition and so forth. And it, you know, I we're just so set up. I, w I mean, we just have no idea. I was screaming about this on Deagle's show today, and I just don't know if anybody's really listening. But the conspiracy movement emulates this all perfectly. They are, they're just totally in, you know, ready to fight. They, they just fight with each other. I've got people attacking me all over the place on YouTube. And it's basically 99% of it's just made-up stuff. You know, uh, yeah, I had someone saying on a video tonight, oh, Grupp says that the only stuff that is real is the, the things that you can see with your eyes. There's n I've never said that anywhere ever on a video. Yeah. I've, what I've said is the, the best way to know about the physical world is by what you can see with your eyes. It's not, it, it's the, just the, it's not a perfect method. It's just the best, best method we have. It's called empiricism. So just people don't listen to each other, misquote. It's just a big mess. Until we overcome that, we're just going to be slaves in the New World Order system. 
it's funny, you know, where, like I wrote about in corporatism, in, in the corporatist culture, the slaves are those who think they're free, while in the conspiracy culture, which is getting bigger and bigger in America, those are the, peop- those are the, the asleep ones who think they're awake, is how I like to put it. So anyway, what do you think about all this stuff? Yeah, and uh, one thing I want to say right now is I don't want to sound like I'm preaching saying everyone is a slave. I'm a slave. I'm dependent on, you know, on my paycheck, on my health insurance. I mean, I am told, but I'm working as hard as I can, you know, to get off the grid. But, uh, you know, I, I think the first step is to realize you, you're a slave because, I mean, they, you know, I, I know there's unions and things, but, you, you know, and there's you can't always just get fired just like that. You know, there are some, I guess, safeguards, but ultimately when you're dependent on, on your employer, you're dependent on the, the government, and then, yeah, as far as the conspiracy movement emulating uh, the larger Illuminati culture, yeah, I mean, I can see that. Uh, sadly, I see it more and more. I kind of, at first, I, it was kind of hard to swallow, because, I mean, that's a pretty harsh thing, you know, you try to be hopeful and positive, but, man, people, yeah, just attacking each other, playing these big ego games, and it's just divide and conquer, and, uh, yeah, the Illuminati just sits back and say, huh, you know, we, we got them to go against each other. It, you know, it worked. You know, they, we're not going to be a real threat until we, uh, we, we, real, we wake up from that and realize that. Yeah, imagine if all these people in the conspiracy culture put one thought. It, it's following what you said here. Actually, you just said if they, they put one thought in their mind uh, loud and clear, which is I am a slave right now. Okay, I don't have my own food. I have to pay for water. You know, they're they're talking about taxing the air I breathe. You know, the food, the clothes that I have on have, you know, toxic chemicals in them that uh, irritate my skin or worse. You know, what if we all just put that in our minds now, simultaneously, with another idea that there's an answer. All we have to do is just depart from that system. Okay, and there's the answer. And we would have a very different conspiracy culture than we have now. Instead of a scared and irrational conspiracy culture that's just fighting with each other and everybody's, so many people trying to be know-it-alls and so forth, we would have basically, and literally, I think, if you put all this together, we'd ha- it would be a, a situation analogous to all those people in Detroit and Atlanta saying, you know, to heck with all this you know, poverty housing in my little application, my fellow, I'm going to the forest. Okay, because it's free and it's peaceful and it's good. And I can listen to crickets and birds. I can wake up to morning wind and the the water's clear and I'm gonna swim every day when it's warm enough. That is, you know, I mean that's what literally the conspiracy culture could turn into, you know. And you know, all you need to do is just have it. it can't be some dumb hippie movement. Not I'm not saying hippies. People call me a hippie often. I'm not saying that. Um, you know, hippies are dumb. I'm just saying it, it can't be something for fashion and trendiness and so forth. It has to be real. Like, this is it. We either do this or we're completely enslaved. And, you know, who knows where this culture is going? It, it, I mean, it looks like sometime in the next 30 years, you know, America is going down financially. I, I'm not sure about that. It just seems like it because of the currencies and the, the trends that are going on now. It could be tomorrow. It could be 30 years. Who know? Who knows? But you know, we have to think about it in that terms. Like, do, do we want to have, I mean, even but more profoundly and nobly, I mean, we, maybe we just, why can't we get a, a situation in America where we just have an army of people saying, I want my soul back, okay? I want to go, I don't want to have my consciousness implanted by all this Illuminati information constantly. I want to just go and listen to God's nature, you know, and look at leaves and, and hear the the insects and so forth. I, you know, I mean, people are happier there. There's no question. Okay, all the mental illness and Prozac and uh, murder and rape and so forth enters when you have civilization, not the forest dwellers. Forest dwellers very rarely have situations like that, and it's usually in very predictable cases where you have, for example, um, certain stress environments. Like, like for example, if there's a, uh, like in northern South America, the, I think Yanomamo had a very stressed culture where there were issues of you know, too many people on certain amounts of land, so then wars and so forth broke out. But that's the rarity. Normally with hunter-gatherers, uh, you know, the more genuine way of living, it's extreme peace. And at the worst, you know, there would be a murder every 10 years or something. So, I mean, that's, I don't know, that's what I'm calling for. I'm trying to get my life, I mean, I am moving, taking steps to move in that direction. Because I'm not sure, you know, you got to do it right. I mean, you go try to live in the forest alone and build a house, and you get the, uh, you know, what's called the, what, what do they call it, the building committee of the city on you saying, you can't build a house like that. You can't yeah. just build it yourself. It doesn't work that way, you know? Yeah, well, that's an issue in itself, too, is even if you were completely off the grid and, 
I mean, you'd have to pay property tax. I mean, that, which yeah. is uh, that absolutely just drives me me wild. So, I mean, but you just do the best you can, and you know, and actually, right now, because I got to be realistic. I mean, I I'm in no place to go move out of the forest. So what I do is I realize I just the basic essentials. If I could collect as much of those right now as possible, if I, you know, if something bad were to happen, if I, uh, you know, lost all my money, is at least if I had food and water. You know, so that's where I think people should really start out. But uh, what do you do for water? Oh well, I just uh, I store it up in a bunch of empty two-liter bottles, and um, it's not very good water right now. It's just tap water, but I need to buy like a good you you know, filter it up. Yeah, I, I need to get like a filter. Right now, it's not filtered because I haven't bought my uh, my fluoride filter. But you know, it's better than not having anything. I I would drink fluoride water as opposed to dehydrate to death. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think a lot of um, antimatter subscribers hear that. Remember that first show I did last May in 2009 where I was describing how, and I'm not trying to be your, your dad here, Ed. <laughs> I'm just, just chatting. Um, when I, I used to filter, really filter tap water. Um, and then I went to uh, drinking water from the air, evaporated water. And I, I, it was the most stark change in feeling I've ever had in my life. It felt so much better. It just told me that... Um, I mean, I felt better when I, you know, started drinking filtered tap water, of course. But it, just making that move to just non-government water was just staggering. And something, I mean, antimatter radio subscribers know I've got pretty um, in-depth theories on what water really is. It's not what most of us suspect. I mean, what it is secondarily is, you know, drink. Okay, it's something, uh, it's some kind of a computer. I'll just, uh, for lack of time, I don't have time to describe it all now, what it really is, but there is empirical evidence to show that it is something quite profound, some kind of supernatural computer. And this isn't some wild, wacky idea. There is strong empirical evidence for this. And so it can be programmed in some way. And, you know, do you want to drink? Uh, if you're drinking a supernatural computer, do you want to drink it coming from the creator or do you want to drink it coming from the New World Order system? And I, th I think the answer to that is pretty obvious. You have to think, you know, when you're drinking water, this is a Nazi system that's... Um, I mean, there's a lot of optimistic things going on, but we have to keep focus, you know, and, and keep realizing what's going on. And there's, you have to realize that, the, you know, behind the system really is, this, you know, Nazis uh, running America. You know, <clears throat> anything from, you know, George Bush, um, Jr.'s grandfather being a Nazi to, you know, there's so many Zionists in Washington, D.C. You know, I mean, half, half of Washington, D.C. is, you know, like straight from the Israeli government. So... It's a pretty nightmare situation. We have to keep focus on that, you know. But I, but then again, there's a lot of optimistic things as well. So, but going back to, um, you know, talking about concentration camps, you know, I was talking to Ed on a recent show on antimatter. You know, we have really no idea what they're for. And similarly, I, I mean, the best theory is they're for the poor or or something. But they hasn't been implemented yet. What they did with most of the poor in the 2008 and nine. Um, economic collapse is ship them to Hawaii and, and just put them in homeless zones and so forth and and uh, just dog them around. Didn't really fill up the concentration camps with them. So it's kind of there's like a theme here. It's curious that the th I'll describe the theme in a second. But we have something the the Illuminati did build concentration camps. And really, if you think about it, we have no clue exactly at the moment exactly what they're for. We have guesses. You know, they're for Americans and they're for the poor. But we don't exactly know yet. Now, 9/11. I did a recent show sort of saying, we don't really know what 9-11 was for. You ask anybody in the conspiracy movement, they'll say, oh, it was to start a war. Or, oh, it was to, you know, do this or to start the Patriot Act. And my answer to that was, well, you know, they started wars before, like the first Gulf War in the early 90s. They did that without a 9-11. They just told everybody on the news, oh, Saddam's bad. And everybody went along. I, was, I vividly remember. I was 21 years old. And everybody just went along with it. Okay, so they didn't need a false flag. And to do the Patriot Act, they've done draconian bills like that before without anything. Uh, and so you, you wonder, what really was 9-11? So we've got a, this same theme going on here. Nine, just like the FEMA camps, we don't really know exactly what they're for. 9-11 was just kind of a theatrical event. You know, I mean, it's just like a new type of theatrical reality for us. And, you know, we really just don't know exactly what it's for. So maybe what I'm thinking here is there's two ways to think about our Illuminati culture we live in. One is we can try to find the causes and reasons for things. But on the other hand, it's probably just some sort of 
higher level technology that we just don't really have a clue about. And we're just basically the fools sitting around here going to our Brave New World jobs and so forth.